Yeah, I mean, the fact that you weren't guarding the three and Kansas State is not known for their three-point shooting. Yeah, this they almost scored 100 points. I'll, I'll say 96, the last basket was, you know what, just go ahead and make it. I don't care. You've been playing the greatest game of your life. But, yeah, you, you couldn't stop them defensively. And, and maybe it was because Michigan State was hitting threes and they just felt like, ah, we don't have to play defense. And the first two games, they weren't hitting threes, Mike, and they played lockdown old school defense. This one, the threes start falling, and they said, nah, we don't have to cover anybody. We'll just outscore you. Well, guess what? Kind of like the Iowa game, you didn't. Uh, David, take a text, and then we'll go to the people. It's sad to see Tom play the luck card against a team with a first-year head coach after giving up an NCAA tournament assist record to a five-foot point guard with one functional ankle. Okay, Ridiculous. why is his height getting shorter and shorter as the show goes on? Because it's like an Italian it's grandmother. <laughs> it's the same principle. My grandmother started out 5'10". By the time she died, she was 3'6". <laughs> AJ was having the game of his life, except he's actually the one that fell asleep on the baseline cut with Noel. Was fake arguing with his coach. Totally looked lost all day on defense. And to Mike's credit, you said that all year about AJ. His defense is just that. Uh, Mike, I agree with you. If State could guard an effing Back cut, <laughs> they win by 20. Right. How can you not adjust? Well, here's the thing, right? Okay, so look at the most famous play from last night. The I'm arguing with my coach, F you, no F you, oopsie daisy, he's on fire, alley-oop, NBA jam, right? Okay. How much of that is Noel and how much of that is Jaden Akins reading his horoscope on the baseline? Just ask yourself the question. You can give credit for Noel, no matter. And again, I've already seen three versions of this story. By the way, there's Wait, been. Are you saying that Aiken? No, no. But Mike, it, it actually was AJ that gave up the idea. AJ. I'm sorry, I said the wrong person. I, yeah. My rage is 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 really simmering. No, but Rico, I've already seen the three different versions. He was calling a distraction play that wasn't. He was talking to. Apparently, he's friends with Charlie Bell. Did you see that story? No. Yeah. Yeah, I saw that. So he, he, that. he was talking to him. I don't care who he was talking to. He could be talking to Tony Robbins. The point is, if you're doing your job defensively, he doesn't get the opportunity to throw that ball, and instead it would look like the stupidest play in history. So, again, everyone is just quick to go, oh, wow, greatest play ever. And I go, dumbest play ever. How the hell did you allow that? Does that make me bad? No, it doesn't. It it means that, you know what, you fell asleep. That, to me, is the equivalent of the fake spike. Or when you see the quarterback and the coach yelling at each other and the quarterback grabs his helmet, like, I can't hear the play, and it becomes a direct snap, and they the defense falls asleep. See, but so, no. Go ahead, David. No, I was going to say, Rico, you said it earlier in the show. It was like they were thinking they were in the Big Ten again, waiting for the set to happen instead of right. paying attention Every moment of the play. Which I, is one of the reasons why I think the Big Ten just can't do well in the tournament because everything in the Big Ten is so methodical, comes off of five, six, seven different screens. And Kansas State was like, you know what, whatever works, we just do one quick little back cut. Cause that two points is the same as wasting the, the whole shot clock trying to get two points. And they took advantage of it. They caught Michigan State asleep so many times that you – you would think at halftime, at least he would say, guys, we're getting beat off the same plays over and over again. From here on out, stick to your man. Do what you got to do. Right, no help. Maddie couldn't do anything, right? No, that don't even get me started. Let's go to Scott, 97.1. What's up, Scotty? Hey, guys. I bring maybe a little bit different perspective for you. I'm somebody that grew up in Metro Detroit. I've been rooting for the Spartans since the mid-1990s. But I'm a graduate of Kansas State University. So all I've been right. this team all year long. You went it's to the Kansas little State. apple. All right, so did a cousin of mine. It's not a bad yeah, place. It's, it's it's a great place. But my, the perspective I'm bringing is someone who, if 
if it wasn't K-State, I'm a guy rooting for the Spartans in this tournament. I love Tom Enzo. Mm. I love the Spartans. So it's a weird place for me to be last night. But here's, my, here's what I want to tell you guys. I've been listening all day today with different times mm. and, and hearing these perspectives. And I understand Spartan fans being upset. I, I get it, okay? And I hear what you're saying about the lack of defense and those kind of things. But here's what you got to understand. Kansas State did not do a single thing last night that they haven't done all year long to some of the best exactly. teams in the country. They play in the country's toughest conference. They Agreed. beat Kansas. They beat Texas. They beat Baylor twice. Marquise Noel was national player of the week back in January when they beat three straight uh, Big 12 top 25 teams. That's when they went to the Fog road. Allen and won by 20. Yeah, and 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 I just – listen, I, I, I hear what you're saying. Yeah, there were defensive breakdowns, but – and I'm not enough – I mean, I understand basketball, but I'm not a professional coach. I can't necessarily break down all the X's and O's and how they're doing it, other than the fact that K-State's obviously doing something to execute these things because everybody knows it's coming. That alley-oop to, to Keontae Johnson, I've seen that play so many times this year. I literally called it to my kids while he was standing out mm. there in the corner. I said, look, here it comes, here it comes, here it comes, and there it was. Izzo knew it, too. I listened to Izzo's pregame show on the radio, and I actually texted my boss, who's a Michigan State alum, and I said, as a K-State fan, I listen to Izzo here, and I just get the unsettling feeling that he's got us figured out. Izzo was saying all this. He called everything that was going to happen in that game. He told the players, yet, watch the lob, and the players still gave it up. See, right. just, Scott, here it is. Oh, and, and that lob. Yeah. yeah, and that's, look, Scott, what you're saying is absolutely Total, it's totally acceptable. Perspective is everything. I'm not minimizing K-State. But, Scotty, you have to understand the history of the program that you grew up rooting for. MSU giving up 98 points in a basketball game is blasphemous. So, automatically, my perspective is I don't care if we were playing Alabama. 98 points, not acceptable. Like, Scotty, you know what's coming. Everyone who knows college basketball knows Noel. So what are we going to do? How about this? You watch you watch K, K State play Kentucky, right? Absolutely. Why the hell would Izzo take Calipari's game plan which didn't work and Noel blew them up and run with it? That's a, that's, a, that's a totally fair point. Totally fair point. I just I just don't want it to be I, I understand the frustration. I really do. I just don't want it to be lost that um K-State, you know, one, I think Rico just made the comment, they're not known for their three-point shooting. K-State's been shooting a three well all year. Noel, Keontae Johnson, and the Sood. I'm thrilled every time one of those guys – okay, I take that back. I yep. didn't love the, the shots from the – No, and Masood was I mean, like right. seven of his last 40, and then last night happened. But, yes, he's yeah, had two big shots wasn't, in the yeah. And K-State and, wasn't and, known for shooting K-State. Steph Curry logo shots. That, that, fair enough. But this K-State team scored 117 points on Texas this year. I mean, it's not like they're – it's not like this is new for them to score. We – listen, State state completely out-rebounded us, which that's Kansas State's weak link. They've, been, they've had to outscore teams all year. Um, I just – bottom line is, guys, I understand your frustration, but from my perspective, as, as frankly a fan of both programs, I wanted K-State to win, but I would have been rooting for whoever won that game to go all the way. My perspective is – I, I actually think both teams played well, and it was a fantastic basketball game in case they just had a little more in the end. I'm fine with it. I mean, look, we're all – Scotty, I still have a beer with you. I'm not mad about it. I just look at it differently. It's not like a hill I'm dying on. But this is what we do for a living, and I'm going to take a stance. I'll defend it in my way. Look, K-State's a good team. But when you're, when you're letting them live at the rim, when you're not making Noel and guys shoot over you, you're not doing your job. And it was a faulty game plan by by Calipari, and we rolled with the same thing. And I don't understand why. I cannot, for the life of me, figure it out. Because I watched K-State take Kentucky apart, and they didn't score 100. No, but yet and still, they – I don't know. Maybe it was just – it's bravado because you see the size of the point guard, and you're thinking – Okay, we could do this. We could beat this guy, and no, you can't. You're, you're never try to go and beat a man at his own. The game point I would make is the fact happens. that Noel is five seven is every reason not to double. Make him yes. finish at the rim, Mike. Nothing was more frustrating than seeing three guys running at him. Right? Like, you wait. No, like, like you know what's gonna happen? Like he's Shea Gilgis Alexander. You know what I mean? Like, come right. on, man. Dude, it's like a horror movie. You you knew exactly. Okay, hey, let's go out in the, into the dark and see what that noise was. Right I there, you, there you go. There you go.